What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. We're going to talk about Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice in this video here today. This will be a spoiler free review for the film. And this is directed by Tim Burton. It is written by Alfred Gow and Miles Miller. And it is starring we know the writer Jenna Ortega, Michael Keaton, Danny DeVito, Captain O'Hara, and several others. Now, Beetlejuice Beetlejuice is about, well, it's a long overdue sequel that set several decades after the last film. After a family tragedy, three generations of the Deets family return home to Winter River. Still haunted by Beetlejuice, Lydia's life is turned upside down with her teenage daughter Astrid. Act when her teenage daughter Astrid accidentally opens the portal to the afterlife. Now, Beetlejuice Beetlejuice joins a growing list of legacy sequels that are able to stand on their own without tarnishing the legacy of their predecessors. Is it better than the original? No, it does what it needed to do. Tim Burton has given us a follow-up that while juggling one idea too many at times, welcomes us back into this world with a heartwarming story that is equally as entertaining as the last despite its shortcomings. It's packed with everything that I loved about the original in terms of tone, even if that's more in line with the animated series, to be honest. Human familial and mortality themes and include some impressive practical effects work. Lydia Dietz has become a celebrity of sorts. Her gift of being strange and unusual, allowing her to see the deceased, has become a source of income for her. She hosts this show called Ghost House, but Lydia's time with the dead has started to create a rift between herself and her daughter Astrid, who thinks Lydia is a fraud that would rather con people instead of dealing with the death of her ex-husband. Astrid's father, or who or who is Astrid's father Astrid's not ready to move on from her father and despises Lydia's manager boyfriend who is named Rory I believe Delia Dietz has advanced her career as an artist in the best way possible but when tragedy strikes the Dietz get a, get together again only for Beetlejuice to resurface hoping to finally make Lydia his wife in the hopes it will help him escape his returning ex-wife in terms of the overall screenplay, I would say Beetlejuice Beetlejuice is playing it pretty safe. We have similar story beats, expansions on plot threads introduced during the original, and enough humor heartwarming moments that kept me engaged the entire time. I just wish it was more refreshing is all, but do not be mistaken, like I said, the sequel is fine. One aspect holding it back though is its attempts to establish two villains who in the end are not convincing enough and very underdeveloped. Dolores, Beetlejuice's ex-wife, is a complete waste of time. She's wandering the afterlife for one scene too many, searching for Beetlejuice, and her ultimate goal is short-lived, which only further solidifies her role as a weak and pointless antagonist that was stealing necessary screen time from other characters who could have had more development as well. What Beetlejuice Beetlejuice does so well is explore three generations of Dietz women. Lydia's career choice might be over the top, but it's believable considering the era of social media and influencer culture. The rift between Lydia and Astrid is something I was constantly hoping to have repaired while watching. Miller and Gal do a great job making Astrid, Lydia, and Delia three characters worth investing in. And whereas the first film could be seen as a metaphor for gentrification, the sequel has a lot to say about exploitation. It's just not as subtle about it is all. And it's really not the most compelling thing these days, considering the culture and the climate we're in. Still, how it tackles the subject is more than effective and engaging enough. The humor featured throughout landed every time for me. Most of it did come from Delia, who steals the show every moment she's on screen. Ironic, ironically, Delia, I thought, was very much so funnier being Beetle, than Beetlejuice on numerous occasions. I'll get to that in a second when I talk about the performances, though. All in all, the screenplay for Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice was a... It was it was on the more it was I'm more of the positive side for me. It's just that it is sort of a mixed bag as well. It, it's honestly juggling one thing too many, and I can see why many coming out of it are gonna think this is messy. But for me, it worked. There was one aspect of it that ultimately grew to be a plot twist that didn't fully land for me because I was a big Beetlejuice fan growing up, so I saw it coming a mile away, and I'm sure a lot of diehard fans are going to see it coming a mile away, but it probably will work on the general public or anyone who hasn't seen the original. So, when it comes to the performances, Jenna Ortega, Jenna Ortega, Jenna Ortega, the woman that you are, Ortega continues to be a standout amongst the up and coming talent in Hollywood. Her work as Astrid is in line with the same great performances we have seen from her in the past. Astrid's emotions are always clear thanks to Ortega's brilliance as an actress. Michael Keaton, I am sorry to say, definitely was the least impressive returning star. He is doing a solid job. He's doing good enough. 
but it felt more like Beetlejuice was getting old. And again, that's another ironic thing for me to say, considering this sequel is long overdue. It just felt at times this isn't the same Beetlejuice. It felt like Beetlejuice himself had gotten older, wasn't as interested, and just couldn't care less if the movie had him or didn't. That's really what I was getting from him. He did a fine job, but it just wasn't the same Beetlejuice. I will be honest and say that I thought this was like a watered down performance of Beetlejuice because of how much older everyone is. It felt like Michael Keaton, at least given the title of the film is about this character, felt like he was more so kind of going through the motions, even though he's still a tremendous actor. In comparison to that first film, this is this is a kind of disappointing, I'll say. Now, when it comes to Winona Ryder, she's doing a great job, as usual. For anyone who's been watching Stranger Things, she's been doing a great job on that show. And she's been doing a great job in anything I've seen her in as long as I've been around on this earth. So she does a, a, a wonderful job in Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Who is the standout, though? That is undeniably Catherine O'Hara. She is the standout. Her scenes are so hilarious, it's hard not to give her that crown, that crowning achievement. She is the standout amongst all of her peers. She's firing on all cylinders. The humor mostly comes from her. Like I said, she is funnier than Beetlejuice on numerous, co on numerous occasions throughout the movie. In terms of the overall visual appeal, it's quite appealing. Tim Burton directed the hell out of this movie as usual. One of my favorite instances is the stop motion sequence that happens in the first act of the film. Very impressive. Tim Burton's having a good time as usual. Um, all of the dark themes of death and all the fantastical things I've come to know and love about Tim Burton. Ex he's excelling at all of that in this film. In terms of the pacing, I did find that the story could drag a bit, but the pacing all in all was fine. In terms of the score... The score was jam-packed with a lot of things that were callbacks while also giving us a fresh soundtrack in a lot of ways, especially when it came to the musical number, which if you've been online and been following the tweets, you know what that musical number sequence song was. I thought that Beetlejuice Beetlejuice for the most part was a solid 7 out of 10. Let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications so you never miss a video. In the description, I'll have links to all my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.